Now we will have uh, Juliette coming from France. Juliette is working for the CINALAF, which is a special organism in France promoting uh, alternative productions. Yep. And I think she will present to us a very representative way of sustainability of broiler production in West Europe. Thank you. So, hello everybody. So, yeah, I will um, present to you uh, a project, the Project Ovali, which is a practical tool to assess sustainability in different broiler production systems and then to propose innovative solutions. So, it was conducted uh, from uh, uh, 2012 till this year, 2014. Um, was, it was conducted uh, by the French Poultry Technical Institute and the French National Institute of Agronomic Research. I worked on this project for two years and now I work for the CINALAF and as Michael told you, the CINALAF's vocation is to defend and promote the Laval Rouge poultry production, which is the traditional free-range poultry in France. And just a few words about that because it's important as one of my example will be the, f the Laba Rouge free range production. So in a few words, it's just a general concept of production uh, with extensive rearing in small farmings and small buildings, small um, poultry houses, using a rustic colored slow growing breeds with uh, low density inside and outside the poultry house. And uh, the animals have access to large meadows of forests depending on the region of France and with a different quality of meat proven scientifically. If you want just more information of, uh, about this uh, production, just ask me. I have some leaflets for you if you want. Uh, well, so the project is to assess sustainability. So why assess sustainability nowadays? Because um, if you want to to propose innovation, if you want to progress, you have to, s to evaluate the actual situation in order to, to progress and in, in a continuous improvement approach, in order to propose innovation when you know what is your actual state. And nowadays, we are asking ourselves a lot of different questions about sustainability. Uh, of course, there is the economic pillar uh, with uh, questions like competitiveness, autonomy, um, self-sufficiency and so on. And the social pillar, we've got questions like uh, welfare, animal welfare, health, attractiveness of jobs, for example. And uh, with the environment parts, we've got questions about use of soil, water, biodiversity, energy, and etc. So a lot of different questions in different ways, but these questions define the sustainability. And because there are a lot of different questions in different areas, we wanted to have a participative uh, approach in order to take into account all the different points of view. So that's why we considered several disciplines with every stakeholder of the, of the chain of production, from the breeder to the retailer, including the farmers, of course, um, and uh, with several points of view. So that uh, allowed us to get common objectives, to have a set of sustainability indicators with a, a robust grid, a robust grid because it was shared by everybody, and uh, the traje trajectories of change were uh, shared by all the stakeholders too. So this is the, um, this gives the robustness of the grid because it's, um, it's, it comes from a consensus for, from everybody. Now you know why assess sustainability, so how, how to assess sustainability, sustainability, sorry, how did we do that? Well, uh, we adopted a three steps approach. First, we developed an assessment grid, then as I told you, we assess the actual situation, and then the, first, first, uh, the third step was to assess innovations and ways of change. So the first step was to build an assessment grid. Um, so for that, as I told you that we adopted a participative approach and we met regularly with this participative group. Our participative group was composed of the production stakeholders. You probably know m some of them. We've got uh, feed manufacturers, um, s uh, slaughterhouses, retailers and so on. Professional organizations, R&D and teaching like uh, technical institute, research and teaching and the civil society, for example, WWF, to have their uh, point of view about the environment, and the CLCV, which is an association which defends the consumer in France. 
And then we asked also the consumers, uh, we tried to get their opinion and their point of view about sustainability and particularly with poultry meat. <coughs> Well, develop the assessment grid. So we decided to uh, develop the grid in different steps. So you've got three pillars. One pillar is like economy or social or environment. Uh, these are the three pillars of the sustainable development ad, as the sustainable development was defined in the um, uh, Brundtland report in 1987. So economy, social and environment. These pillars were, each pillar was divided in three objectives. Uh, one objective is like a general goal, a general priority which define each pillar of the sustainability. Then each objective was divided in uh, two or three criteria. And one criterion is like a specific objective. So an objective general and then uh, a criterion is more precise, more specific. And then you've got the indicator. The indicator is like the most important thing at this grid because it's the thing that you will measure in order to uh, have the assessment. So it's a simple and measurable variable and that's why it must be relevant, of course, relevant reliable, sensitive with each situation and simple to calculate and easy to understand because we will ask people um, uh, questions with surveys so they have to understand the question, uh, everybody has to understand the question in the same way, otherwise it won't work. And then we give score to each indicator, so for it's just an example, but in red you've got the maximal score, the maximum weight, uh, which is assigned to each uh, indicator, and then if you sum two indicators, of course, you've got the criterion and so on and so forth. And so this is the maximum score, and for each pillar we gave 180 points, the, it's... Uh, N not important the, the score, but uh, what you have to know is that each, uh, every, all the pillars have got the same maximum score because this is the soul of uh, uh, sustainable development. Uh, each pillar, economic, social, and environment, have the same uh, the same weight. Uh, it's important not to prefer economy than uh, rather than environment or social pillar. These three pillars are important to say that we are in a sustainable development. Way. Um, well, and then we gave like um, it's like an energy lab labeling lab that you can find, uh, for example, on the appliances. So it's just more easier to understand when you give an, a letter, uh, for example, an A, rather than to say you've got 130 points. So this is easier to understand to have that grid. So this is the final grid. It's in French because I. <laughs> I didn't have time to translate everything, but just for you to know, to, to, to see what is the final grid. So we've got nine objectives, 28 criteria and 45 indicators. Just a few examples for, for you. Uh, for example, you can have for the economic pillar, uh, the one objective could be the general to generate value on the territory. Uh, the criterion associated could be to improve the competitiveness of broiler industry and then the indicator the production costs. For the social pillar, one example, um, objective meets citizens' expectation, criteria comply with animal welfare, and then one pododermatity score. And for the in, uh, environmental pillar, uh, to control environmental impacts, uh, then preserve soil and water quality for the criterion, and the eutrophication potential. So that's some um, examples. Then the second step is to assess different broiler production systems. Um, for that, we decided to, ha to assess uh, what we called a typical case. A typical case is like um, a real situation that you can find, um, that you can actually find, for example, in France. So it's um, a real situation for poultry production. And this situation has to be, um, has to be um, find in, uh, in one territory. It's very important in France, the, um, the territory because they are linked between stakeholders and uh, there are differences between regions and uh, between territories. So we decided to assess one production chain in, his in its territory and that defined one typical case, which is the reality. From the top to the bottom, from the breeders, feed manufacturers to the retailers and consumer. Then we collected information and we uh, started the assessment. 
Uh, to collect the information, we used two uh, approaches. The first one and the major one uh, was with surveys. So we, um, we interviewed a lot of people, uh, a lot of re um, stakeholders from the production chain, from the breeders to retailers, included farmers, slaughterhouses, and etc. So we made about more hundred than 100 surveys for all the typical cases. And for the information that we couldn't had that we couldn't get from these surveys, we used the literature and we collected information from, for example, Ministry of Agriculture, uh, French Poultry, the French Institute, etc. So this is um, information which are scientifically proven. So two examples of this assessment and uh, to begin I just want you to understand what I assessed. So this is the ID card of two French boiler production systems, two different uh, production systems. As I told you, the French uh, Label Rouge production system here, uh, so different uh, kind of productions. The first one using uh, rusty colored slow growing breeds. The second one, the standard, the conventional uh, broiler using fast growing breeds. And you can see differences in volumes for the hatcheries, uh, slaughterhouses, retailers, and of course the farming is, uh, is different. In clustration here, uh, the traditional free range. Etc. So this is the results. Um, just to uh, understand, we don't want to compare these two uh, situations. Uh, in France, they are really complementary. These two productions, Label Rouge and Standard, are really complementary. So these results uh, are not there to compare uh, the situation and to say, yeah, the Label Rouge is better than the Standard production. But this is the results. Um, for example, for the Label Rouge production, as you can see, uh, you've got BBA, which is not bad. And uh, what we could see with this grid and with the assessment grid is that um, the strengths of this, uh, of this typical case uh, are, for example, for the social parts that it gives information about the origin of the project and it respects animal welfare. For the environmental part, uh, of course, the, um, the good use of non-renewable resources, water and byproducts, the integration in the landscape and so on. But there is some weaknesses and, for example, the competitiveness and the um, profitability uh, must Mm, the, 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 mm, the most important uh, weakness was the competitivity, for example, added value, net margin in the, um, in the firms, and the budget for R&D, and also the energy consumption. Then for the standard, con uh, standard production, uh, some of the strengths was that it creates local jobs and it meets consumers' expectations. Uh, for example, the price, because of course you know that the um, poultry is one of the cheapest uh, protein, the cheapest meat that you can find. Uh, it's also good for the use of water and energy and even for GHG emission. But the weaknesses are also, like the Labarouche production, the profitability and, uh, which is really important, the dependency on imported protein crops. This is important because one of the examples that I will uh, take for the innovation uh, system uh, is focused on this uh, dependency on imported protein crops. And even the lack of communication and information, agroecological agro landscaping are weaknesses for this typical case. Then the step three, uh, the third step, uh, was the, to assess innovative systems. So we decided to choose some systems, and I will present you just one example. Uh, we decided to focus, uh, for example, on the, to improve domestic protein self-sufficiency. Because in France, this is a real problem that we are facing in, our, uh, in animal production and particularly for poultry. As you can see on the first chart, uh, for example, for the year 2010-2011, there is a huge deficit in protein-rich ingredients in animal diets because here is the prod for production and so for consuming. So as you can see, we produce 60% of our consumption. So we need 40% uh, more uh, protein-rich ingredients that we can't find in France. And particularly, as you can see, the soya is really used and we don't produce it at all, or just a bit, but it's more for human uh, purpose. And as you can see on this chart, uh, the estimated use of different all seed meals in animal feed. Uh, so the um, poultry is in purple and it's used just 
a few rape, a few sunflower, but the most, uh, it, it used mm, uh, a lot of soya. So as you can see, the almost the the third part of the, uh, of the soy is used for poultry. So this is a real problem because we import a lot of soya and uh, we can't produce it at all in France. So our test was based on uh, two kind of innovations which are related. One formula with a French full fat soybean meal and uh, one formula with no soybean meal at all and just all seeds and protein crops. And the control test was the regular feed formula with a Brazilian uh, soybean meal. So this is the results. Um, I decided to present it to you with uh, that kind of chart. And just for you to understand, it's uh, the, criteria, the criteria and it's given in percentage. So that means that, for example, for the criterion improve the competitiveness of the broiler industry, if you've got uh, 12 points of out uh, 24, for example, that means that you've got 50% of the points. Uh, as the criterion, uh, the criteria didn't have the same weight, uh, it was easier to represent them with a percentage on this kind of chart. So as you can see, uh, this uh, innovation improved a little bit the situation because we passed from a B to an A. And uh, of course, the, what was improved was the reduction dependency on imported veg uh, vegetable proteins, so mostly the soya, and improved a little bit the competitiveness of the broiler industry, the cost production. It creates also uh, loca local jobs, so it improved the economic criteria. For the social criteria, it was a little bit difficult because we don't have all the, um, the keys to know what will be the um, consequences of an innovation on the social part. Uh, for example, this innovation would probably increase pro political commitment, but we don't really know, so that's why we didn't decide, we decided to not uh, test, uh, to not assess that and to say it will be the same, but this will probably improve, uh, for example, the, in the political commitment or uh, uh, probably to encourage the supply chain to become more involved in local life, I, I don't know. But what we can presume is that uh, it will provide information uh, on the origin of products uh, because uh, retailers could say, we, uh, can say with this innovation, well, we produce uh, one chicken which is produced on one territory and with the f and which is fed with the feed and produced on this territory too. So this is a 100 percent uh, chicken produced on this territory. So we can presume that it will uh, improve the information on the origin of products. And for the environmental power, which was uh, which was good. Uh, it improved it a little bit uh, because there is an optimization of energy consumption, of what to use, uh, genetic diversity, and even uh, the bi uh, not the byproducts, but the, it reduced the GHG and particles emissions. So it has improved also the environmental criteria. So to conclude, uh, maybe I was a little bit uh, quick, but just to conclude, what we have to know is that this tool is uh, based on a participative approach. I think that's, uh, well, that was one of the points of this morning uh, from uh, Mr. Mat Matlock's uh, speech, uh, which is really important because the participative approach uh, takes into account different points of view about sustainability and which allowed us to, uh, to have a consensual definition of uh, uh, objectives and of a consensual grid, and we could make uh, assessments uh, about the um, different broiler production systems and even propose uh, scenarios to improve sustainability and assess these scenarios. So this participative approach was really important in this project. And it's also a tool for progress because it can highlight the improvement margins, as I told you, the competitiveness, profitability for the economic pillar, but it also permits to emphasize the strengths of the studied case in order to promote our productions, for example, for the politics or for the citizens and consumers. And it's a non-static uh, tool because the indicators could uh, be uh, reassessed and be improved. For example, if you have got uh, new data and updated uh, data for the environmental impacts, then we could reassess, uh, we can reassess the situation and uh, uh, so it's not static. Uh, and then 
this tool showed us uh, that there is no antagonism at all between the three pillars, the social, economic and environment pillars. So that showed us that it's possible to uh, produce um, so, uh, so sustainable uh, production systems in poultry production. Uh, and there is no antagonism, for example, between economic and environmental pillar. We could uh, manage both. And then, uh, which is really important, is that this uh, project showed us that there was a real need for dialogue between all the stakeholders for all the chain of production. And uh, this was really important because together they built a uh, sustainable production systems. W the uh, thought about the production, uh, the new uh, new production system in poultry, uh, innovation, etc. Et so they were together in a, around the table and they talked to each other, and uh, th this is really important. So to conclude, I just want to to thank all my colleagues because, as you can see, we were a lot of people working on that uh, program. Uh, and to finish, I just want to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Juliette, for this uh, nice tool that could be applied in uh, different places, I assume.